Hello everybody and welcome to another New York 360. I'm Mike Varley. I'm Jesse Hyatt and today we're here in Highland Park. It's very close to our house and it's a really beautiful park. It's a park that I didn't know about until we moved out here and I was looking for some green space and it's surprisingly spacious and special. Two yeah. weeks ago, we were uh, at the other half of this locket, which is the Ridgewood Reservoir. Uh, you can check out that video that we did on our page. And we thought it was a big enough space that we could divide it into two. So now we're gonna show off some of the video that we took earlier today, uh, showcasing the park. Yeah, and I have some information to tell Mike in person and all of you who are listening at home about Highland Park. Let's hear it. So like you said, we were at the Ridgewood Reservoir two weeks ago, and the Ridgewood Reservoir is actually owned by Highland Park at this point. Did you know that? No. Mm, well, it's true, um, but it wasn't always part of it. It's mm -hmm. a recent acquisition. So Highland Park started to be acquired in 1891, and it took between 1891 till 1908 to become what it is now. Okay. They sort of started taking little pieces. There were different farms and homes and property that the people building Highland Park bought and then put together to make what it is now. The Ridgewood Reservoir didn't join the park until 2004. So that was a hundred years that the park was just what we walked around today. Do you know how big the park is? No, I don't know how big the park <laughs> is. Do you have any guesses? Well, whatever I usually guess, it's half of what it actually is. So 120 acres. Oh, that's a pretty good guess. It's 141 acres. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was a good guess. Yeah. I wouldn't have really known either. And as you will see in the video, and as we have learned, the park is actually sort of like three pieces. If you consider the Ridgewood Reservoir as part of it and then there's the part that we're sitting in right now and then you actually have to cross the street you have to cross Highland Boulevard to get to lower Highland Park which is interesting I don't know how many times I've been in a park where if I want to continue in the park I have to cross a fairly busy road right I think of parks as like places where I was sent to play as a kid alone and then you think about like crossing a busy road and that's that's kind of funny. Hmm. Anyway, speaking of Highland Boulevard that we have to cross over to get to from high, Upper Highland Park to Lower Highland Park, we've talked about it a number of times. There's all these beautiful big houses over there. Yeah. Yeah. And those, a lot of those are old Dutch homes. Oh, okay. From a couple hundred years ago. And now, and most of them are privately owned, but there's a handful, I think this is, this kind of holds it together. There's a handful of those homes that are owned by the, the Catholic Church, by the Roman Catholic Diocese over here. And we walked by a couple of them. We, we noticed that there's the Pope John Paul II House of Discernment, right. which is for men that are deciding whether or not to go into priesthood. Oh, okay. And that's, it's specifically for like younger men. So I think it was 18 to 40 is the ages. So people that are in the first half of their life and are deciding whether that's something they want to continue with, they can live there and I'm not sure exactly how it works, but I know they can live there and they can figure it out. And then there's also a monastery. There's the Discalced Carmelite Sisters Monastery. Do you know what the word Discalced means? No. It means no shoes or sandals. Oh. Yeah, so it's a group of sisters who don't wear shoes or sandals and they practice a life of complete isolation. So once they enter that monastery, they don't go, they don't leave. So they're, you know. They're secluded. They're secluded and they're they're probably doing fine with this whole social isolation thing. They're in there. They're safe. They're probably praying Good. for the world. They're probably which praying is what they for the usually world. Do. That's nice. I appreciate it. But we walked by, and, and if you're watching the video, you'll notice the Discalced Carmelite Sisters Monastery because there's a big wall around, and there's angels at the top of the wall, and there's also broken shards of glass oh. that are at the top of the wall. Oh, I didn't notice. Oh, you didn't notice that? No. Oh, well. 
you'll have to take a look at the video because yeah. it's really, it's actually quite beautiful um, and a little scary. But <laughs> I guess that these women came from, they were in Crown Heights before and they moved in 1997 and apparently the building that they had in Crown Heights, they also had the broken glass. But I couldn't figure out any symbolism about that. Um, maybe I have to do some deeper, deeper research or maybe someone knows and they'll share it with us. Um, and so that building actually was not Dutch. It used to be part of a Lithuanian community that lived over here too. And one more thing about those big homes is that they're all sort of a, a similar style home. Um, not the really big mansions, but the ones that are like medium sized townhouse. Mm -hmm. Most of them were built by a company called Richard's Real Homes in the early 1900s. Oh. That's just a fun fact that I'm telling you because I thought it would make you laugh like it did. <laughs> so, yeah, part of, part of why the park was established was because people were coming out here. People were, more people were moving to Brooklyn and prior to to the early 1900s there were a lot of farms out here and then it was becoming places where people were just living it was getting a little more dense in population and in 1893 the j and the z train extended to here prior to that it didn't come this far i see so it was a it was a place that people could live and get into the city and it was also a place that people could come out to i guess if they wanted to and I have one more fun fact about this, this park, and it's that in 1991, the western part of the park, which is the part that we're in right now, the part closer to our house, was named, was given like a second name. You know how some, a lot of New York places have like the original name and then a second name named after a person. Okay. So it was named after Vito P. Batista, it's the Vito P. Batista Playground. Oh. And do you know who he was? No. Oh, you never heard of him? I don't think so. Okay, well, he was a local educator. He was a member of the New York State Assembly, and he was also a frequent mayoral candidate. Oh. He never became the mayor, but he frequently was running. Oh. And I guess the people around here liked him. Nice. Did you ever figure out what ethnicity he is? It, it seems like that could be... Vito Bautista could be a bunch of stuff. Oh yeah, I think I thought he was Italian, but I didn't write that down. So I don't know if that was just something I thought in my head. Oh, and I, but I'm just realizing there's actually one more thing I wanted to talk to you about. Oh, great. <laughs> Cause I was hoping that we'd be able to see it a little bit better, but a lot of stuff is caged off right now. Um, but there's a statue in this park that's pretty important and it's called the Dawn of Glory. Did you notice that statue? I think I may around? have noticed it, but there's a lot of construction right now. Yeah, so that statue was made by Pietro Montana and it was commissioned by the local Kings County American Legion and it was a war statue. So it's actually, what it is is a man, it's a soldier that's wrapped in an American flag and it's his soul ascending to heaven. Oh, I definitely saw that then. Yeah, it was a World War I statue. Yeah, it was really cool looking, and it looks like they reseeded the grass around it. It was very lush. Oh, that's where, yeah, that's exactly where that bright green grass was. Yeah, so that's a special statue, and um, the model for that statue was a famous bodybuilder. Oh. Can you guess who it was? Uh, body by Jake. Oh, good guess. It was Charles Atlas. Oh, of course. Yeah, he was the model for that statue. Nice. Anyway, that's everything I have to tell you about this park. Wait, hold on. What about the tulips? Oh yeah, we should talk about, I guess there's just a lot going on in this park. It's really, we have a lot to talk about, huh? Yeah, we saw these tulips when we were walking around and it's, I took a picture of the plaque. Yes, tell us more. So there's in New York, all around New York, as people might know, and this is not only New York that does this, but there's these art exhibits that get put up through the parks. It's called Art in the Parks. And there's tulips that are just like one nice circle of tulips. It's really beautiful. And it's called The Temporary Red Dot by Danielle Frazier. And it's only up for uh, the months of March and April of this year. But it's yeah. part of Art in the Parks. And it's part of the New York City Parks and also the 
Forest Park Trust and Color Blends Wholesale Flower Bulbs was written in like a marker on the plaque. So I think there were a number of things written in marker on the plaque. So I think the artist must have come on and added her own information that wasn't pre-printed. Yeah. Yeah. And actually speaking of the New York City parks, there's 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 that. So there's art in the parks here in Highland Park, but there's also a really great bike path that runs through here. There's the bike path that runs through Brooklyn and Queens. It's the Brooklyn Queens Greenway. Oh, right. I used to ride my bike through here when my studio was over here. Yeah. It's a really it's a nice little part of the Greenway. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if we're able to find anything more about the artist and the project, we'll link to it in the description. That's a great idea. We will. Yeah. And maybe other people have already heard of it. Yeah. Maybe they know about arts, arts in the park. Yeah. Well, we're also passing in the video a bunch of tennis courts. If we haven't already, quite an impressive amount of tennis courts and basketball courts. And we were here two weeks ago, as we said earlier, when we were at the reservoir, and those were packed with people. Yeah. And they since have taken down all the uh, nets to keep people uh, apart from each other. So. Yeah, it was uh, totally empty. It's really, I mean, you really get to see the court itself <laughs> today yeah um the courts are i mean the courts are cool they're like bright colors and i don't know what that court is that has like a bunch of weird designs on it it's not a tennis the one there's one in between the tennis court and the basketball court maybe people watching can see it and will be able to tell us what it is yeah i was interested in it we didn't really focus on it it looked like it might have been like a handball court or something i don't know it's not handball i don't really know but you could really see that this park is a pretty thriving area when it uh, has the opportunity to be used and it's a little bit of a far walk for us to use it every day but I would like to come here more especially in a few weeks more I think these these trees that are, that are behind us are really gonna peak. Yeah we're lucky that it's close to our house it's I mean I think this park is really great for the people that live over here in the neighborhood of Highland so like on Highland and on Jamaica on this side of things, but just over that way, beyond the hill, like you can see from the park, the highway. Yeah. So we have to walk like sort of around the highway to get here. Yeah. Whereas if we lived over here, we could just walk right into the park. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that wraps it up for this week. Thanks for taking a look around with us on this other New York 360 adventure of ours. Thanks uh, for watching. Yeah, and if you like what you watched, uh, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can get updates on everything that we're doing. As always, uh, we're putting one of these out every Friday. We have Jesse's live streams on Tuesdays, which are a lot of fun. You can come interact with us, hang out. And we have the work craft videos. The Tuesday streams are called craft work. The Monday uh, videos are called work craft. And that's where you get to see a little bit of what Jesse does at her job. That's true. Yeah. Please join us. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Have a great one. Bye.